In this video, I'm gonna cover all the Python built-in functions for dictionaries so you can start using them right now. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh and I'm stoked to have you guys back. Before I dive into today's episode, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help my channel out within the crazy YouTube algorithm. Now, as I said, today's video in this short amount of time, I'm gonna introduce to you guys all the methods and functions for working with dictionaries in Python. This is gonna simplify how you work with dictionaries and speed up your workflow along the way. You're probably using some of these, other ones are gonna be new. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be using them in your code. Real quick guys, the first link in the description that's my weekly Python newsletter where I write about topics that are requested by you guys. Head on down there, come and join in on the fun, and join my weekly Python newsletter. All the other links in the description are for you guys to help you get started in your Python journey. Now, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's rapid fire through these dictionary methods. Now, these are in no particular order. Okay, use the timestamps below to check them out. Now, the first one I'm going to start off with is actually clear. Clear allows you to reset a dictionary without creating a new one. Okay, and this is really useful because it's going to modify the original dictionary and it doesn't take any parameters or anything. Okay, so if I just print off my dictionary, I'm left with an empty dictionary. Boom, just like that. Okay, now we cleared a dictionary. Now I wanna create an existing copy of this dictionary. Now what we have here is if I say my dict dot copy, okay, this is gonna create a shallow copy of our dictionary and it, it really just copies the reference of the objects. So anytime you wanna create a copy without affecting the original, okay, I have my dict dot copy, but what's the name of my new dictionary? I'm gonna call this new dict equals. Okay, so, so if I come down here, I now have a brand new dictionary and it's just called new dict. Run your code, voila. So copy allows you to create a new copy of an existing dictionary, pretty cool. Okay, next up is a really cool one. I'm gonna use a method which is gonna allow us to create a new dictionary from a sequence of keys and they're all gonna have the same value. I can specify the value or I don't actually have to. So I have the keys here, name, age, gender. I'm just gonna create a variable for you guys. Let's say like default value. And I'm gonna say, I'll show you two cases of this, unknown. Now, if I come down here, I'm gonna create a dictionary. Let's call this dictionary uh, new dict, okay? And all we have to do here is I'm gonna say dictionary from keys. Now inside from keys, it's gonna take really just one value. What are the keys? And so I'm just gonna say keys. Um, I'm going to print this off and I want to show you guys two use cases for this. So here I'm printing off this new dictionary. Now, if I don't specify the value, it's automatically going to give the values as none, right? So name, none, age, none, gender, none. But from keys, you could also specify the value that you want here. So I'm saying unknown for each of those. Put anything else, right? Now I'm updating these values. And this is great when you really just want to quickly initialize a dictionary with default values. We can use the from keys method. Okay, next up is one that we should know, we should be using, okay? What we're gonna use here is the get method, okay? So if I take my dictionary and I can say get, now get retrieves the value associated with a key. So for example, if I say get channel, it's gonna give me code with Josh. So I'm just gonna drop in here, I'm gonna say channel, okay, let's run this. Voila, code with Josh. Okay, so I'm, all right, dictionary key unlocks a value. But this time using get, I can just say get and then key. That's gonna return to me that value. Now let me show you, for example, let's say one's not here, right? So I take my dictionary, I get, let's say uh, uh, day, I don't know, day. Okay, I'm gonna run this, let's watch what happens. You can see that it returns none, right? I can also insert here um, a value pretty much. If I say day 
it's going to treat that second argument as the value. All right, so this is great because this prevents errors by returning a default value. So in case you have a missing key, it's not gonna do that, okay? So anytime you're trying to return a default value, it's gonna prevent errors with that. Get is gonna return the value for what we give it. Okay, another favorite here is being able to iterate over the key value pairs in my dictionary. Okay, so anytime I wanna access both the key and the value individually for something, we have a really nifty method. I'm gonna say for key, comma, value. Okay, I'm making a for loop here and we're saying pretty much two things. I'm creating a key and I'm creating a value. Now I need to go through my dictionary, but the dictionary is not stored as a key and a value. So I can use the items method here. This allows us to use them individually or unlock them individually. I have a key, I have a value within that dictionary using the items. So if I wanna iterate through this, it's pretty nifty. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna print off, I'm gonna say, uh, let's say your key, and then I'm gonna put a comma, and let's just drop in our value. Okay, let's run that code. Awesome, there we go, channel, code with Josh, action, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, hit that like button, subscribe. Okay, so items allows you to iterate over a dictionary and unlock the key and the value. We're working with dictionaries. Now this is a data structure, but there are times where I wanna take the keys or take the values, and I wanna use those and create a different type of data structure, like a list or something. Okay, so really, if I come down here and I say print, okay, I could, well, I'll, I'll create a variable for you guys. So I'll be like key list is equal to my dict, and I'm gonna say keys. This is gonna create a list from the keys. And since I'm here, I'll just throw in the other one. I'm gonna say value list. I can say my dict and I can say values, okay? So when I come down here, I now have two completely different lists from our dictionary. I can say key list and we will come here and I'm gonna say um, value list. Let's run our code. Boom, look at that, okay? so. Dict keys, dict values. This is really gonna allow for a quick iteration over the keys. If I wanna quickly go through the keys or quickly go through the values to check all the present keys, I can create a list from that to go through and use a for loop one to check. All right, next up is deleting a certain key from our dictionary. Now remember, if you delete a key, it automatically removes the value. Yes, I could do this. I could say Dell, I could take my dictionary and I could drop in right there, right? A, a, a delete, delete dictionary key, this will take the value away. Okay, just to showcase that here, uh, I already have it programmed to an F string. Let's just take my dictionary, run the code. Now there is another way to do this. There is a pop method, and this is gonna remove that specified key and return the value, right? So here's my new dictionary based on the code we have. I'm just gonna turn this off for now, okay? Let's, for example, I want to pop, I wanna remove this key value pair, and I want to, whoops, use this value in an outside variable. So I can safely remove an item and when we remove that, I can use that value for further processing. So for example, if I make a variable called channel and I take my dictionary and I say pop, okay, what do I want to pop here? I'm going to say channel, okay? Now if I print off here and we just say channel, my variable, let's watch that value. There we go, the value is code with Josh. Okay, so I'm extracting this value to then use as the value to a variable using pop. Cool, next up, is typically pop allows us to pop off the last item. Well, inside here, I'm gonna create a variable called x. I'm gonna say my dict. We actually have one called pop item. And pop item is gonna remove the last key value pair automatically and it's going to return that to us as a tuple. Now, this is really good when we wanna destructively iterate over items, 
and keep the order that we currently have. So if I come here, I'm going to print off two things. I'm going to print off X and then we're going to print off uh, my dictionary. Let's run that code. Cool. Look at that. So I popped off action subscribe and that returned to me that as a tuple, right? I can now treat that as a tuple. So for example, if I index one, let's watch that again. There we go, subscribe. Okay, so I'm treating that as a tuple now. And then the other one is my updated dictionary. So pop item is gonna pop the last key value pair and return it as a tuple. You can now work with that as a tuple. The next one that you've seen around is set default. And set default allows you to insert a key with a specific value um, if the key isn't already present. And it's going to return that value. So if I just create here, I have channel action, let's say sub count. Okay. And let's take our dictionary. Let's say set default. Now inside there, I'm going to create that key. So I'm going to create a key and I will call this sub count. And then I'm going to specify the value. We just cracked 22,000 subscribers. Okay. Pretty cool. So if I come down here now, I'm pretty much, if it's not there, okay, which currently I don't have that, it's going to actually put that in our dictionary. And I'm going to show you what it looks like if we already have that too. Okay, so I'm going to run this. You can see now, boom. okay, so I'm printing off sub count. Okay, if I come down here and let's take our dictionary, that's only returning the value. If you want to quick check that, just print your dictionary. There we go. And you can see sub count has been added. Now, let me switch this. Let's say, for example, if I say channel, run your code. Okay, channel does not change, okay, because I already have it. So set default is only going to add to your dictionary if you don't already have that in the dictionary. Okay, finally, we have the ability to overwrite key value pairs. Now, we have a method which updates the dictionary with items from another dictionary or an iterable of key value pairs. So this is really effective if you want to merge two dictionaries or update an existing dictionary with data. So here I have my dictionary. I'm going to take my dictionary and I can just say uh, update. And inside update, let's just say something like, uh, I'm going to pass this in and I want to add new values here. So I could be like, I don't have sub count anymore. So I'm actually going to say uh, sub count. Okay. I'm going to add that. And um, let's just say once again, I guess as a number uh, 22,000. And then let's just say, since we're on YouTube, what genre do we do? Let's say like genre and uh, oh, I guess I can keep that. And let's say coding. Okay, come down here, print it off, run your code, voila. Okay, I've updated my dictionary. I've added more key value pairs in a whole, okay? Um, if I come down here and I were to, actually let's just change this to action and let's change the action to say like, okay? So like the video, there we go. The action has been updated. I'm still adding genre because that's new in the dictionary. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you guys got value in today's video. And if you did, hit that like button and subscribe. Drop me a comment and let me know which of these methods you found most helpful that you're going to start using right now. And if you feel like I missed something, also let me know in the comments. Okay, guys? Well, that's all for this week's episode of Code with Josh. Remember, guys, the first link in the description is my weekly Python newsletter. Head on down there, check it out, and I will see you guys in next week's episode. Until then, Python crew.